Welcome to my movie recap. Today we will highlight a war drama film titled Full Metal Jacket. Let's get started. The story opens in the U.S. Marine Corps training camp, where a group of young Marine recruits, after having their heads shaved, are being prepped for basic training by the brutal gunnery sergeant Hartman, whose orders are to weed out all non-hackers. Hartman gives each of the Marines nicknames, one pragmatic recruit who talks behind his back becomes Private Joker, a Texas recruit becomes Private Cowboy. And finally Leonard Lawrence, a 280-pound slow-witted recruit with low intelligence and ambition, becomes Private Gomer Pyle, and the focus of Hartman's brutality, because the overweight recruit cannot keep up with the other more physically fit recruits in the grueling obstacle courses. Hartman leads the recruits through endless running, marching and rifle drills. When Private Pyle mixes up right from left, Hartman slaps him viciously and makes him walk behind the platoon with his pants around his ankles while sucking his thumb after he cries from the constant verbal and physically abuse. On the obstacle course, Private Pyle can't perform pull-ups or climb to the top of one of the higher obstacles, receiving more torrents of verbal abuse from Hartman. One morning during muster, Hartman asks Joker if he believes in the Virgin Mary. Joker responds that he doesn't, angering the Catholic drill instructor. The clearly religious Hartman gives Joker a vicious backhanded slap and orders Joker to change his answer. Joker stubbornly refuses, stating that he believes that Hartman will only beat him harder if he reverses himself. Hartman immediately promotes Joker to squad leader for having the courage to stand up for himself. However, Hartman also gives Joker the difficult job of being Private Pyle's personal instructor. Off on the sidelines over the next few days, Joker helps Private Pyle through the obstacle courses, shows him how to operate and clean his rifle, and how to make his bed. However, all of Joker's effort is later proven to be a waste. During a routine evening inspection, Hartman, noticing that Private Pyle's footlocker is unlocked, searches it and finds a jelly donut. Food is strictly forbidden in the barracks, and Private Pyle is not permitted to eat donuts because he's overweight. Enraged, Hartman decides that from then on instead of punishing Private Pyle for each transgression, he'll punish all the other recruits in the platoon. A few nights later, the angry recruits attack Private Pyle with soap bars wrapped in towels, while Cowboy gags him and a few others hold him down on his bed with a blanket. At first, Joker is reluctant to attack Private Pyle, but Cowboy persuades him, Joker hits Private Pyle harder than others did. In his bunk, Joker covers his ears, ashamed at himself for his actions, while Private Pyle howls in pain. After the traumatic experience, Private Pyle slowly begins to go insane, but also shapes up and becomes the fastest and best rifleman, especially after Hartman lectures the platoon on how Lee Harvey Oswald and Charles Whitman were both crack riflemen trained in the Marine Corps. Hartman is impressed with Private Pyle's shooting skill and his marked improvement in training. Later, when Joker sees Private Pyle talking to his rifle and staring off into space blankly and not responding to interaction, he realizes that Private Pyle is losing his mind and confides in Cowboy about Pyle's growing mental breakdown. By the end of basic training, Pyle clearly lost his mind. After graduation Hartman assigns each recruit. Most of them is infantry. One exception is Joker who is assigned as a basic military journalism. On the platoon's last night on Paris Island, Joker draws fire watch, during which he discovers Private Pyle in the bathroom, loading his M14 rifle with live ammunition. Frightened, Joker attempts to calm the insane Pyle, who begins blankly shouting, executing drill commands and reciting the rifleman's creed. The noise awakens Hartman, who angrily confronts Private Pyle and quietly demands that he drop the rifle. When Private Pyle refuses and does not respond, Hartman hurls further insults at him. Private Pyle responds by shooting Hartman dead. Joker pleads with Pyle, who lowers the rifle and nods, possibly in recognition of Joker as a friend. Private Pyle sits down on a toilet and followed Hartman to the grave. One year later, Joker is in Da Nang, reporting on the Vietnam War for the military newspaper Stars and Stripes. He and his partner, combat photographer Rafterman, meet a prostitute in the streets and encounter a thief who steals Rafterman's camera. Walking back to their base, Rafterman remarks how U.S. military forces are there to help the South Vietnamese, but they frequently take advantage of them. He also wants to join Joker in the field and get a good story. Joker tells him he won't take him along for fear of Rafterman being killed. They return to their base for a press meeting with their commanding officer, Lieutenant Lockhart, who reviews their latest news offerings and gives some of his core new assignments and shares new directives about reporting standards.
Joker, however, wants to go to the front lines to get a good story. Joker also remarks that there's a lot of talk about the Tet Holiday ceasefire and how it may be broken by enemy forces. Lockhart scoffs at the idea, saying that the Vietnamese will simply go about their usual celebration of the holiday. That evening in the barracks, Rafterman talks with the other soldiers about wanting to go into combat, as Joker claims he has done. One of the other GIs mocks Joker, saying he knows Joker has never been in combat because he doesn't have the thousand-yard stare. The sound of nearby artillery fire interrupts their argument. The North Vietnamese army are attacking and attempting to overrun the base in what turns out to be the beginning of the Tet Offensive. Joker's unit returns fire, but the base is not attacked as heavily as other locations. The next day, the staff learns about enemy attacks throughout South Vietnam. Lockhart sends Joker to Phu Bai, a Marine forward operating base near the ancient Vietnamese city of Hue, to cover the combat taking place in the area. Rafterman accompanies him, hoping to get some combat experience. During the helicopter ride, Joker and Rafterman encounter an insane door gunner who shoots indiscriminately at unarmed Vietnamese civilians on the ground, boasting about his ability to kill. When they land outside Hue, Joker and Rafterman meet and talk to a lieutenant, Touchdown. He tells Joker, who is looking for his old friend Cowboy, that he's Cowboy's commanding officer. However, before Joker and Rafterman meet the squad, they follow up a rumor about Vietnamese civilians, who are reported to have been executed by the Viet Cong. They go to the mass grave and find over 20 bodies in a mass grave that have been covered with lime. Joker talks to a lieutenant who confirms that the deceased were told by the Viet Cong they'd be re-educated at a public meeting and were massacred when they arrived. As they wrap up their coverage, Joker is approached and lectured by a belligerent colonel who demands to know why Joker wears a peace symbol on his body armor when he also has the words born to kill written on his helmet. Joker answered, it has to do with the duality of man, according to Jung. The cynical colonel doesn't believe him and tells him to get with the program. They later meet Cowboy's unit, the Lust Hog Squad, and Joker is finally reunited with Cowboy, who has been promoted to sergeant and is second in command. Joker accompanies the squad during the Battle of Hue. As they approach Hue under tank cover, several mortar rounds land in front of them, killing Lieutenant Touchdown. Another Marine nicknamed Crazy Earl takes command of the squad. The group goes into battle and quickly comes under enemy fire from a nearby building. After the battle, the squad is interviewed by a Turing Combat News team, and they share their experiences and opinion of the war. A while later a South Vietnamese pimp with a prostitute visit the resting Marines to offer her services to them. The squad goes out on patrol again, this time in the factory ruins north of the Perfume River which divides the city of Hue, where the Americans believe enemy forces have hidden themselves. Crazy Earl comes across a toy rabbit in a ruined building and picks it up, triggering an explosive booby trap that kills him, leaving Cowboy as the reluctant squad leader. The squad becomes lost in more ruined buildings, and an unseen sniper pins them down wounding two of their comrades, first Eight Ball, and then Doc J, when he tries to drag Eight Ball to safety. The sniper refrains from killing the wounded men, with the apparent intention to draw more of the squad into range. Cowboy, unable to get tank support for the squad, orders everyone to pull out and leave Eight Ball and Doc behind. The M60 machine gunner, Animal Mother, disregards Cowboy's orders to withdraw, charges into the clump of warehouse buildings, and locates the sniper. As the squad maneuvers to try to locate the sniper's position, Cowboy is shot through a hole in one of the buildings. He is rushed behind one of the blown-out buildings where the squad tries to keep him alive. They fail and Cowboy dies in Joker's arms. Animal Mother assumes command of the remaining Marines and angrily declares, let's go get some payback. Using smoke grenades to conceal their advance, the squad enters the building and searches for the sniper. Joker finds the sniper on an upper floor, but his rifle jams as he tries to shoot. The enemy sniper, a teenage girl, spins around, opening fire with her automatic rifle, pinning him behind a column. Panicked, Joker drops his rifle and draws his sidearm, however he is unable to shoot back. Rafterman arrives and shoots the sniper, saving Joker. As Animal Mother and other Marines of the squad converge, the sniper, still alive, begins to pray in her native language, then repeatedly begs shoot me, prompting an argument about whether to leave her to die from her wounds or to put her out of her misery. Animal Mother decides to allow a mercy killing only if Joker performs it. After some hesitation, Joker shoots her with his sidearm. The Marines sarcastically congratulate him on his first kill as Joker stares into the distance, having finally gotten his dehumanized thousand-yard stare. 
The film concludes with a nighttime shot of Joker, Rafterman, Animal Mother, and all the rest of the platoon, marching through the burning ruins of Hugh toward their bivouac for the night, singing the Mickey Mouse March. Joker states that despite being in a world of shit, he is glad to be alive and is no longer afraid.